what we need right now sa elections would be two things, no? Um, firstly, would be a well-calculated um, policy reform program or agenda. But more importantly, I think the political will in order to execute that particular agenda. Now, on those two levels, I think that um, Jesus Cudero has the best um, record to, 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 to fulfill those two criterions. Um, firstly, because if you talk about his agenda, um, it basically focuses on reforming institutions. Now, reforming institutions is very important because um, it's the main proponent of change in, 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 in Philippine society in, in terms of development. And if you take a look at it, marami siyang proposals in order to, to fix reforms. Like for example, issues on uh, a bloated bureaucracy that we have right now. Currently, we have 1.3 million um, employed government employees. Now, he wants to stream down that, that number. But more importantly, on that issue also would be the, the ill-equipped um, information and communication technology system inside government. That also affects efficiency. But more importantly, I think in, in the level of political will, um, he also wins that. Kaya nakasabi nga si Shirt ko, ang kabataan ay dapat hindi lang pag-asa ng bayan. No? Ang, ba ang kabataan dapat maaasahan ng bayan. Um, maraming batigo sa kanya na bata pa siya. And that's a disadvantage. And coming from Youth for Chiefs, we beg to disagree strongly. Precisely because we think that's his biggest advantage. Why? Precisely because when you talk about people like us, um, the youth, Tayo hindi tayo, we're not afraid to risk. We're not afraid to change status quo. And that's important. We're not entrenched with traditional political um, traditions, di ba? Um, that old people still want to maintain because they think that's right. No? Um, so yun, I think that's one of his biggest advantage. But secondly, on political will, would be that he has no political lineage. Um, that means that there's less propensity for nepotism and choosing people just because he's friends with that particular person. No? Uh, okay. yan, um, basically, yan. okay, Robin, we'll give you a chance to explain also kung bilang uh, kabataang kandidato, bakit siya malapit sa kabataan, yun naman yung mahalaga doon. But let's move on to Kariz naman. Uh, Kariz, bakit iboboto ng mga kabataan si Senator Jambi Madrigal? Dapat lang iboto ng mga kabataan si Senator Jambi Madrigal. Bakit? Kasi naniniwala ako sa kaya niya. Una, hindi siya trapo. Naniniwala din ako sa kanya dahil malakas ang paninindigan niya. Hindi siya korap. Hindi siya tumatanggap ng campaign contribution galing sa malalaking negosyante at mga tuta ni Marcos. Una-una, hindi niya kailangan to dahil alam nating lahat na mayaman ang pamilya ni Senator. Pangalawa, ayaw niyang tumalaw ng utang na loob at pangatlo, upang hindi siya magamit pagdating sa panahon. Marami siyang programang na nagawa sa bayan natin at taong natulungan. Hin kasi naniniwala ako na hindi kailangan ng popularidad, popularidad sa taong malinis ang intensyon tumulong. Sabi nga nila, ang taong malinis ang hangarin, nakakaharap dito kagaya ng ginawa ng aking kandidato. At naniniwala din ako sa kanyang prinsipyo kasi kung titignan natin, yung lolo niyang si Jose Abad Santos na matay para sa bayan, di ba? Maraming, maraming nangangako ng pagbabago, pero ano, may napapalaba? Wala! Kaya ngayon, sa darating na eleksyon, ako, umaharap mismo sa harapan ng buong mamamayong Pilipino dahil naniniwala ako sa, kandid sa kandidatura ng aking kandidato. At syempre, Hindi, dahil sa hindi siya trapo, may paninindigan siya, marami siyang nagawa. Siya ang patuloy na lumalaban sa karapatan ng mga kababaihan. At sa pamamagitan ni Senator Jambi Madrigal, siya ang ina, solusyon, tutulong at magbabangon sa pinakamamahal natin Pilipinas. Alright, thank you, Chris. Next, we go to Shales. Ang uh, sinusuporta niya ay si Senator Dick Gordon. Dick Shales. Sabi nila noon, mawawala ang pag nawala ang subic days military, mawawala ng pag-asa ang bundad ang subic, at mawawala ng trabaho ang karamihan. Pero dumating si Dick Gordon, inalagaan at napalulad pa niya lalo ang subic. Sabi nila noon, hindi maging tagumpay ang turismo sa Pilipinas kumpara sa ibang bansa. 
Pero dumating si Dick Gordon, naging wow Philippines pa. At ngayon sabi nila, wala nang pag-asa ang bansa natin. Ngayon natin kailangan isang Dick Gordon. And when he announced that he was running for president on the 2010 election, um, he said that he wanted to change the country. He wanted to change the value of the Filipino people. And we have witnessed the track records of Senator Gordon. First, when he was a mayor of Olongapo City, he has turned the same city into a model city for urban development. He has provided peace and order for making the people volunteer. When he was a chairman of the SDMA, he provided over 90,000 jobs, over 300 investors, um, um, providing um, 3.5 billion US dollars in foreign investment. When he was a chair of tourism secretary, um, meron tayong yung sa Wow Philippines naging um, attract yung ibang foreign investors and Intramuros making it a tri uh, thriving center of for tourism and for the livelihood. And then when he was a chairman of the P Philippine National Red Cross, um, he always that and the go lagi siyang fast and efficient when it comes to relief operations. So, sino supportahan ko si Senator Dick Gordon um, dahil marami na siyang napatunayan at sa lahat ng kandidatura, um, siya lang yung, mar, ma, yung iba, hindi wag natin titignan yung basis ng ibang candidates that those promises that he made, that they made, but um, dapat tignan natin yung basis ng yung mga promises nila na na-fulfilled na nila. Maraming salamat, Shields. Mamaya, gusto ko pa rin balikan yung uh, tanong tungkol sa kabataan. Siyempre po, anong gagawin ng mga sinasuportahan ninyo para sa kabataan. Pero ngayon, meron muli tayong mga tanong galing sa ating uh, mga audience. Aaron? Thanks, Bianca. Yung kasama naman natin ngayon, well, before natin sila introduce, gusto rin namin i-acknowledge your presence ng mga students and faculty of DLS College of St. Vinyl School of Deaf Education and Applied Studies. So, parang parang naman natin sila na in, in their way. In, in, so, wave your hands in the air. Alright. So, kasama naman natin ngayon si Ana Dita Angkay, one of the students ng, uh, ng Deaf Education uh, uh, what you call Studies of Vinyl at Interpreter niya po is si Nikki Flores. So ito po yung, at uh, Paris rather, I'm sorry. So ito po yung question nila. Yung tanong ko po, my question for your candidates, uh, what are they planning to do for the people with disabilities, including the youth, uh, including the deaf who are part of the youth sector? And do they have plans of opening opportunities in terms of education and employment for the deaf. Uh, kasi here in the Philippines, there are a lot of deaf persons na walang trabaho o kaya hindi na makapag-aral. There are very few schools for them. So what are their plans? Uh, I guess we can make it, yeah, we can make it uh, more broad, ano. Um, our uh, members of the youth na with a certain type of disability in terms of education or employment kung ang siguro isusulong Ang mga kandidato para sa kanila, Robert. Um, yun nga, um, yung one of the biggest things, the biggest hurdles we have right now would be the education. And if you look at his track record, he was the one who separated CHED, um, TESDA, and DepEd into three, three separate and autonomous institutions. That before, it was just techs. Diba? Um, so that proves that He's really for education. But 